Hello everyone, my guest today is John Miller. He's a marketing entrepreneur and thought leader. He's currently the CEO and co-founder of Engageo, an account-based platform and orchestrates outbound interactions across departments and channels. Previously, his ma- name might look familiar. He was co-founder of Marketo, a leader in marketing automation. He's a speaker and writer about marketing best practices and is author of multiple marketing books, including the clear and complete guides to account-based marketing and sales development, along with Marketo's definitive guide to marketing automation. John, are you ready to take us to the top? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so everyone knows Marketo. Let's pick up the story there. When did you leave and why? When did I leave Marketo? Yeah. I left in uh, 2014. The, um, <clears throat> I mean, the reason why is you know, Marketo just got to be a bigger company. You know, and as we passed you know, 1,000 employees, it started feeling less like my baby and more like a job. You know, and so I, I was craving kind of going back and doing the entrepreneurial thing again. And then it was just a question of finding the right idea. Yeah, you, you're one. You like being there on the early days, scraping, hustling, right? First customer kind of stuff. Yeah, I just love how impactful you can be when, like, you know, you, you get 24 things done in, in a day rather than needing 24 people in a meeting to get one thing done. Yeah. So, did you put that suit jacket on just for this call? I did. <laughs> All right. Talk to us about the new company. Now, did you launch Engageo right in 2014 after you left? Yeah, literally. There was a long weekend in between. Okay, so that's that's funny. You you didn't take any break at all. Well, you know, Marketo actually had a sabbatical program, uh, so I had the opportunity to take a couple of months the summer before in Italy uh, as as part of you know still being a Marketo employee. So I had my break, and then I was ready to kind of hit the ground running. Okay, so usually founders, you know, that build something like a Marketo then spin out. It's usually they they saw something like, wow, we really need this in Marketo, but I got stuck in meetings and bureaucracy. I could never actually execute it. So I'm just going to leave and start it myself. Was that the case here? And if so, what does Engageo do that Marketo just couldn't? Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly that. You know, for me, it was more, I knew I wanted to, you know, go start another company. I knew I wanted to start something that was in marketing technology because that's my love and my passion. So the question really is, what's the idea? What, what, where, where did I see an opportunity, you know, in marketing technology? Uh, and as I sort of looked at, you know, the landscape and where people were focusing and so on, um, you know, I, I kind of came across this, you know, new style of marketing called account-based marketing. And it did reflect back to a pain that I did have back at Marketo because, you know, you know just at Marketo, when we were doing our marketing, we were innovators in sort of the demand gen uh, inbound marketing kind of model. It's what I call fishing with a net. Yeah, you know, we'd we'd create content, we'd run campaigns. You know, we'd cast that net out there. We didn't care who responded. We just cared did we catch enough. You know, and that worked for a long time at Marketo. But as we started to try to move up market, sell to bigger, more complicated, uh, more enterprise companies, turns out those big companies don't just happen to swim into our net. Right, we had to find ways to reach out to them. That was hard with Marketo. The tool wasn't really set up to support that, mostly because Marketo was a lead-based system and not an account-based system. You know, and so that's where I sort of saw this opportunity for this new, uh, new kind of platform and marketing technology. Uh, instead of fishing with nets, it's something I called fishing with spears. You know, because we're going to reach out to those big fish proactively. That was sort of the idea. It makes a lot of sense. Walk me through. So today, I'm sure you have loads of different customer cohorts, but uh, two questions. One, is it a pure play SaaS company? And two, if so, what's kind of the average customer paying per month for your solution? Uh, it is a software as a service solution. We do annual contracts. So I tend to think things more in terms of annual contract value as opposed to uh, monthly recurring revenue. So our, our average uh, annual customer value is about 30000 Okay, 30000 And walk me through what they're getting for that typically. Is it like a seat-based approach or what? Um, it's, uh, not seat based, you know, typically marketing software isn't sold by the seat, um, just cause you know, you don't have that many users in marketing. And frankly, I want to have as many people touching the software as possible. So I'll come back to the actual pricing metric in a second, but what you get, um, it's a couple key things. You know, the first we call an account foundation, you know, effectively the challenge is tools like Marketo and Salesforce and your corporate email system, all the stuff you've got, it tends not to roll up to the account level. You know, leads and Salesforce don't tie to accounts, for example. So the first thing our solution does is just aggregate all your account information together, uses something called lead to account matching to tie it to the right account. And then we can expose that information back out. So it's not super sexy, but it solves a real challenge is, you know, you're trying to be account based. Your other systems aren't. 
we're going to make everything account based. John, just to be clear, when you say lead to account, you're talking like um, Suzanne at companyx.com and Joseph at companyx.com are two separate leads. Your system would say that's actually part of the same account. It's just two people under the company X account. Is that accurate? Uh, that, that that's correct. And you know, the, the challenge is if you get a list from a trade show or you know somebody fills in a form on your website, they may not even put in a corporate email address. They might put in a Gmail address, right? And you know, sometimes you know you might have bad data in your system, so you might have two copies of the same account. So a lot of the science <laughs> is which are the right things to roll to roll things up to the right account. Once you have that foundation, then we have two other main things that we do. The first is we actually let you orchestrate multi-channel plays for reaching out to the accounts. So this is the spear phishing. Super yep. simple example is, you know, an email from your CEO to their CEO will probably be more effective than an email coming out of your marketing automation system. So how do you manage the workflow of, you know, somebody else drafting the email for their C your CEO and then they just approve it? So different tactics for kind of activating and reaching out to accounts. And then the third piece is measure. Marketing measure is done uh, using quantity-based metrics. How many leads did you generate, for example? That doesn't work in ABM. It's more about quality. You know, am I reaching out to the right people at the right accounts? And so you need different ways to measure if it's working, and we provide those solutions. Got it. So year one was, again, 2014. You took a long weekend, essentially. Uh, you have not bootstrapped. I believe you've raised. How much have you raised to date? Uh, a little over 30 million. And why did you decide right? I don't know if you do that right at the gate, but why did you decide to go to the funded path versus the bootstrap path? Honestly, it was because of the hype that I had coming out of, <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I could have bootstrapped and built a prototype and gotten some customers and all that, but I don't think I would have actually gotten a better valuation than I was getting literally just being John Miller coming out of Marketo, you know, and, and if anything, it might've actually reduced, you know, reduced it because they'd be basing it on reality and not based on hype. Yep. Yep. No, that, that's a really interesting and, and honest perspective there. I appreciate that. Uh, walk me through what you've scaled to today. Total customers on the platform. A little north of 200 customers. You can do the math because I told you the ACV. Yep. So yep. You, get, you can get a sense of what our uh, uh, annual recurring revenue looks like today. Yeah. That puts you at about 500 a month, right? Or about 6 million annually. Yep. We still have, we still have um, a good chunk of our cash left. Um, just about, you know, just under half of it. So we got lots of runway still to keep building, uh, you know, our solution. Talk to me about growth. So if you're at about six million in AR in terms of run rate today, where were you a year ago? Um, we, don't, we don't disclose kind of growth numbers, but um, we're growing, we're growing fast. Can you give us a range? Triple digits, sing, high single digits, or double digits? Uh, yeah, probably high doubles. High double digits. Okay, great. And where is most of that growth coming from? Is it focused on kind of expanding accounts you already own, or really bringing on brand new accounts? It's, it's a good mix of both. Um, you know, I mean, we do have a fair, I mean, we, we practice what we preach. We drink our own champagne. We do account based marketing. We have our target accounts and we do a generally good job of reaching out and, and, uh, engaging with the companies that we want to talk to. We actually have, you know, 95% of our target accounts know who we are, uh, yep. which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and then, you know, typically our larger customers are the ones that are most likely to have significant expansion revenue. Uh, and so, you know, obviously that's an important part of growing in these SaaS business. Net revenue, net, net revenue retention, assuming churn's not a huge issue, I imagine is above 100%. Uh, if so, how far have you been able to push that? Um, well, the, we, we definitely, you know, we see, we see, what I'll say is in the right segments, the kind of core segments, we see those kind of metrics. Um, the reality is, you know, as a smaller business, you know, your first year or two, you don't necessarily always sell the exact right customer. Uh, yeah. um, the smaller companies have higher turn rates than the larger companies, you know, so kind of dialing into the ICP is definitely part of the, uh, entrepreneurial journey. Yeah. We grew so fast, you know, to hit 6 million, uh, in just about three years is pretty, you know, from literally from a stand, I mean, standing start still at Marketo, you know, past that, that's pretty quick, you know? And so definitely there's, uh, uh, learning that happens along the way. Yep. Yep. You're signing customers up that you're just kind of chasing. You're not sure if it's a fit. You then learn six months in, they're not a fit. So they churn and you're like, yeah, do we count that as real churn? They're not really our customer target moving forward. Right. Yeah. What, what can you, I mean, can you generally, you have three years of historical data, uh, you know, churn on an annual basis. I mean, what are you optimizing for? Where is it at today? Um, well, so what, what I'll say is, you know, what we found, not surprising. A lot of companies see this, um, you see significantly higher churn in companies with fewer than hundred employees than companies with more than hundred employees. Yep. 
you know, and so, you know, like a lot of business, you know, we're not trying to be ju just enterprise, just large company, but we certainly try to focus on companies, you know, that have enough scale and sophistication to really take advantage of what we're doing. Yep. If we nor obviously people like to measure revenue or t revenue churn because it ignores kind of big ARPU differences or, or at least, you know, takes that into account. So if you just look at your revenue churn across the base, I mean, is it in a spot that you feel is healthy? And if so, what is that general range you're in? Um, don't disclose the exact numbers. I always like it to be better. You know, yeah. I mean, um, you know, and again, what else, you know, say in that core segment of the ICP that we found, very comfortable with retention. What does ICP stand for? Uh, ideal customer profile. Got it. Very good. Walk me through, walk me through here. You're driving customer growth. So when you look at CAC and your fully weighted CAC and what payback period you're kind of optimizing for, walk me through how you're thinking about those metrics. Sure. Um, you know, like, uh, most SaaS companies, we'd like to sort of see a CAC of roughly about one. Uh, so, you know, so we'll spend a dollar to get a dollar first year on annual revenue, you know, and as you, you know, as you said, you know, you kind of get hundred percent plus net revenue retention. You've built yourself a nice annuity that way. Um, I we, we think of, we tend to think about how we're going to allocate that dollar of CAC between marketing and sales as a rough rule of thumb. The, you know, I think that the percentage of, of, of marketing, you know, if you look at the ratio of your marketing investment to your sales investment, that percentage ratio should roughly correlate to the percentage of pipeline that is generated by marketing. So at Marketo, we spent almost 50, 50 between marketing and sales. So the ratio was hundred percent and marketing generated almost hundred percent of all the pipeline. You know, at Engageo, we are more like one third, two third marketing to sales. So marketing's 50%, marketing's generating about 50% of the pipeline for sales. And then the outbound account-based efforts, whether it's ADR, SDRs, or salespeople, that's about the other 50%. Interesting. So of that dollar of CAC at Engageo, you'll say, I think I just heard you say, you'll put 30 cents on marketing and 70 cents on sales? 35, 65, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then you said that's kind of your target. I mean, are you, are you, are you at that today and you're, and you're having to pull back to not go above that? Or are you already above that and trying to work your way back down? Um, we, we, we really dial the business into about that one. Okay. That's, I mean, that's healthy. That's great. Um, walk me, uh, talk to me more about a lifetime value, right? This is a metric that I think lies to a lot of people. Some people don't care about it at all or people really use it a lot. Do you use lifetime value as any kind of leading indicator? Not really. I think that's a lot more common in, you know, kind of businesses that have monthly economics and, you know, and all that. I mean, you know, effectively, again, if you've got uh, greater than 100 percent net retention, your lifetime value goes sort of infinite. So um, it, we don't tend to look at that way. We look at uh, the more traditional enterprise SaaS metrics, some of the stuff you talked about, you know, CAC, gross retention, net retention, so on. What's team so, size today? About 60 people. 60. And how many of them are dedicated to their sales or marketing? Uh, 20, 20. So. Okay. That's pretty healthy. About a third there. Very good, John. Uh, let's, uh, let's wrap up here with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, I really like the advantage by Patrick Lencioni. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Not really. Number three, is there a, uh, what's your favorite online tool for building your business besides your own? Favorite online tool for building my business. Google AdWords. Google. <laughs> you guys spend a lot there. Uh, not as much as we did at Marketo, but I still think, you know, I mean, search is just obviously pretty cool. Yep. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? About eight. And what's your situation? Married, single, kiddos? Married with kids. How many? I got two, a 12-year-old boy and a nine-year-old girl. Yeah, I was going to say kids, not wives. All right. Uh, last question. Well, sorry. Last two questions here. How old are you, John? 46. And what do you wish your 20-year-old self knew? Um, that uh, when things are, things are never as good as they seem when things are good things are never as bad as they seem when things feel bad guys things are never as good or as bad as they seem uh, at marketo really pioneered this approach of cast a net out hope you catch something now at engageo is really focused on again a spear-based approach so launched in 2014 has raised 30 million bucks serving 200 enterprise accounts paying on average 2500 bucks a month so about six million dollar run rate today that's up call at you know high double digits in terms of growth year over year they've uh, raised 30 million bucks healthy economics spending about a dollar to get a new dollar in ar that's split you know 65 35 between sales and market marketing as they scale with our team of 60 folks, healthy payback period, about 12 months as well. John, thank you so much for taking us to the top. Thank you.